Welcome to Source BMX, I'm Van Homan. Today, we're here in Paris, France with the legendary and well-decorated flatland rider, Matthias Dundois. Matthias is the proud owner of X Games medals, multiple Nora Cups, and a nine-time world champion. So no place more fitting than to check out his whole Bastille signature build than right here at Place de la Bastille. The name of your frame is the Bastille. So why don't you explain the inspiration behind the name? Absolutely. So this is a really uh, special place for us French people. This is where the revolution happened in 1789 and when it's everything true. changed. And with this frame, I wanted kind of a revolution. Okay. When everything changed, uh, blending flat with street and park and dirt, uh, a bike uh, you could use for everything. Okay. So, and uh, I live literally 200 meters from this uh, place. So when uh, we try to come up with a name with Arrow, La Bastille seemed uh, fitting oh. and uh, this is why it's called La Bastille for the revolution reason and the fact that it's my neighborhood. Oh, perfect, amazing backstory. <laughs> amazing backstory on the name. It's usually not that insightful. Okay, Matthias, let's dive in to the specs of this frame. As a flatland rider, it's expected the steeper 75.5 head to and the shorter 12.75 rear end. However, you also dabble in the streets a bit and how does this thing cross over between flatland and technical street riding? Yeah, I mean, uh, a flat bike usually is really uh, rammed down and uh, it's impossible to ride street with a like tiny flat bike. So I wanted something that could be used for everything. So I ride a 21 top tube here mm -hmm. And um, I think the, the angle is 75.5 here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the back end, I think is 12.9 when it's uh, slammed. So, you know, mm. it's pretty- The internet said 12.75 when slammed. 12.75? Yeah. Well, the yeah. Italian is right. the internet <laughs> told me. I don't know. I'm pretty bad with that. 12.75 when slammed. For me, I think it's 12.9 because I don't ride yeah, it slam. Right, right in the middle, yeah. The thing with this fr with this frame, I've never broke one, and when uh, I'm done with one frame, usually last me like between six and eight months. I give it away to some kids that need one, uh -huh. and they never broke it. And Amazing. I've never heard of anyone breaking that frame. I don't know why. I think it's because the the dimensions are just goes well together and it's solid you know uh -huh. sometimes the the width here is too big or too short and then it it makes it fragile at some place okay but this one is crazy for some reason i've tried really hard to break one when we were testing it, but I, I never succeeded and it's also i think it's important to point out that flatland can really put a lot of stress on a frame a lot of people might think like you're staying on the ground and like but you're putting a lot of torque and a lot of pressure on the on the welds and the joints of the frame. Yeah, for flat sure, yeah. for sure, definitely. And I've done some some street stuff in my time, not uh, recently because I uh, I'm old and broke off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, I've put this frame through uh, through hell. And uh, Ryan Nyquist is riding in uh, in park. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Nyquist is riding yeah, your frame. Yeah. Nyquist is riding my frame. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, like, you know, just to, to prove uh, again that it's made for everything. As you mentioned, you're riding the 21 inch top tube. It's also available in a 19.5 and a 20.25. How tall are you and why do you choose the 21 inch top tube? I'm uh, six foot one, I think. That looks right. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm six one. 186 centimeter for the normal people <laughs> that use centimeter like everyone else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the world, so we, we need to speak speak to the world. <laughs> and uh, I ride the 21 obviously because I'm I'm a pretty tall guy, but I wanted uh, also the shorter guy to uh, enjoy this frame. So I think 20.25 is a good compromise if you mm -hmm. ride street. But uh, most flatland riders they they ride a frame within between 19 and 20. So I wanted okay. a, a frame also for the Flatlander, so 19.25. Uh, 5, 19.5. And uh, I know, yeah, like, I think I tried the 20.25 and it was too short. I think 21 is a sweet spot for me. Mm -hmm. I might go with 21.25 because my friend ride uh, 
a frame like that and it feels pretty good as well so maybe I'll try because my back has been kind of hurting lately so maybe trying a, a bigger frame on the next version of La Bastille why okay. not why not all right all right so maybe we'll see maybe we'll see an even longer option all right Matthias in addition to your signature frame you also have your own fork you have a 15 millimeter offset which is a bit steeper again kind of coincides with the flatland at technical street riding what went into the design of this fork and how does it complement your frame? Absolutely. So I've rode um, straight fork uh, the whole beginning of my uh, riding career. And uh, riding straight is really hard to ride a, a straight fork okay. because it's super steep. When you want to hop, it's like it's too uh -huh. too responsive. So I tried a, a longer fork, maybe like uh, 25 offset, but uh -huh. it was too crazy to ride flat long because sometimes we uh, we, we put the bar in the different direction, uh -huh. so the difference was too crazy. So I think 15 millimeter offset is the sweet spot for me. Uh, perfect to ride straight and perfect to ride flat. And this fork is pretty special too because the 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 things here uh -huh. are tapered. Okay. So like when I put my feet right here, it doesn't hurt. Ah. At all, you know? I have more more room because if it was round like a regular fork. Yeah. Inside of my feet or the outside of my feet would hurt. Okay, that's so, very interesting to hear that because, you know, a lot of times we think of it from a street perspective and we're thinking that gives you like grind clearance. But it's really interesting to hear the different perspectives of how that like works for your foot during like technical flatland tricks. And we, is this also, we've got a picture of you? Yeah, right that's here? me. That's me. So what trick, are, what trick is it? It's this? a plastic man. It's a plastic man. It's a plastic <laughs> man. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, All right. ego, ego trip, you know. Yeah. Have an ego trip. No, I like it. I like it. Myself on my fork. You need, but it. it's honestly probably one of my favorite parts that we uh, designed with Haro. Okay. Same, it's unbreakable. Haro has its lineage line, which provides the classic look while giving modern day performance. You've got the lineage stem, 52 millimeter reach, the cranks, 165 millimeter length, and the sprocket in a 28 tooth break down this line of products, how they perform, and how they just capture that classic essence of Haro. You know, Haro has a crazy history within BMX. It's one of the most legendary brands. And when, it, when they came up with that uh, old school yet new line, I instantly loved it because, you know, I'm a really big fan of the history of BMX, but I'm also a really big fan of performance. Uh -huh. And I think this line brings it together perfectly. That stem is one, one of my favorite looking stem in BMX. I don't know, I really love the way it looks. Uh, Dennis was riding it and I was like, I need that, it looks sick. Uh, the cranks are really good too because they are, they are not sharp here, they are kind of like round. Mm -hmm. So when I do uh, tricks on my pedals, same, it doesn't hurt my feet and this, is, was, this was really important for me. 165. I was riding 175, but the, it was a bit long when I was doing tricks on the back wheel. Uh -huh. So like, you know, the reach here, I didn't have much pace. Ah. So and 155, like, didn't didn't feel as good when you pedal. It feels okay. like you are pedaling on the scooter. I don't know. I don't like it. So 165 for me is really the sweet spot. And uh, most flatland riders ride really tiny uh, sprockets uh -huh. because for pedaling tricks and such. But I'm using my bike a lot in Paris to pedal from point A to point B, and 28 is a is a must. I ride yeah. 28 in the front, nine in the back. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of a like you said, that's an up gear, and especially for a flatland rider, that's yeah, a pretty yeah, big gear. Just because I pedal everywhere. So yeah, okay. that's why I run that. But no, the lineage line is is really like I think one of the sickest thing Haro came up with in the in the last 10 years because. It brings that classic style with the with the today's performance so mm -hmm. great stuff something else i noticed about the sprocket which is something i personally appreciate is that it's a spline drive sprocket which keeps everything really clean and streamlined gives you less bolts to have chunky stuff getting loose on your bike yes break down the spline drive for us you know the spine drive is the greatest invention uh, you need a lot of grease for it. When okay. <laughs> put it. But once it's there, you know, it's gonna stay there forever. Uh -huh. And I absolutely love the look. I mean, no bolts, you know, like, there is always something loose on my bike. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the worst mechanician ever. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible. It's really terrible. So, one less bolt, happier Matthias for sure. And 
it looks so slick and uh, and I think it's also more solid because the bolt mm. sometimes you know it can break. Yeah, it can maybe shift yeah, or shift. flex. Yeah. yeah, this you don't want because your your knee ends up in that beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> this you don't want. <laughs> so no, I think yeah, like the spline drive is beautiful and makes it clean and less dangerous. So all good. All right, Matthias, while we're on the drive train, let's talk about the Haro SD pedals. These are Dennis Ennison's signature pedals. They're a rare combination of a plastic and sealed bearing pedal, which is super rare. Break down these pedals and why you trust them. Well, if Dennis writes them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the best marketing argument ever, you know. Fair enough. Dennis uh, designed these pedals for a while and uh, they are the best pedals in business. He's the, the most talented, uh, the most gnarly BMX rider out there. And if he rides this pedal, this pedal must be good. Yeah, and it has like kind of a low profile too. Is that something that you desire in a pedal? I like it. I don't like those chunky uh, big pedals, you know, because uh -huh. I, I need uh, that um, feet to pedal uh, feeling. Okay. And when I ride those like tinier pedals, like the SD pedals, it gives me that feeling. So I think, you know, they are definitely my go-to pedals now. And honestly, if I wasn't riding for Haro anymore, I would still ride those pedals 100%. All right, Matthias, you have the premium CK Chad Curley signature handlebar, 9.25 rise. Break down these handlebars for us and why you choose them. Um, I was riding 975 bars before. Okay. And uh, I wanted to go with something a bit uh, lower and I love it. I've been riding those bars for a month and they are really amazing. I really love the little uh, CK thing here. Mm -hmm. Makes me think of, uh, of the little Chadu. When I, uh, when I ride it, I really love the guy. I really love Chad, man. He's the, he's the funniest human being. It's great to have all these parts you can represent your voice on your bike. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Matthias, how about your seat, also named the Basti? I assume this is your signature as well. What went into the design of this seat and how important is the shape of your seat and the height of your post? The importance of the seat is very, very high for me because okay. um, I always have it in my hands because I ride flat, okay. which is uh, weird for a lot of street guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like when I do tricks, it's very important the the the, the bottom of the seat, ah, okay. what goes under, because if it's too sharp or if it's uh, mm. if it's too like shallow or too big or it, I can't ride with it. Okay. So we designed a seat that was like you know I can put my well. Wow. So the inners are actually yeah. customized yeah. underneath. Exactly. Wow. And so when I ride, uh, it's, it's, it feels nice. It's a perfect handle. It's a perfect handle. <laughs> yeah. But, and how about the height post? That also important. I yeah. The, it's pretty important. I cannot ride a uh, ready slam because when I do uh, tricks, you know, uh, I, I would be like too, uh -huh. too like handle. over. Yeah. So like this is uh, a nice, a nice height. And also when I do bar spins, it's nice to, to catch it with my knees. Uh -huh. So I think yeah, I have a little uh, thing here that I do with a with a knife, you know, mm -hmm. to know like approximately okay. where to put it, so you don't forget. <laughs> yeah. I don't forget because I build and unbuild this bike so many times yeah. to like put it in the back bag. So a man of the world. Yeah, I'm a man yeah. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthias. Let's talk about your wheels. You have the Odyssey Clutch Free Coaster Hub. This thing has external slack adjustment. It also has an external grease port for easy maintenance. You didn't know any of that? No. No, it's got it. It's got the, see, it's got these mechanisms right here. Wow, I didn't know about that. High tech. This so you don't great. adjust your slack, you no. stick with it? No. Oh, this is send me wheels, I put them on, they run great. <laughs> that's that's all you need to know. You, <laughs> you put them on, they run great. See, that's all you need to know about the Odyssey wheels. You put them on, they run great. Sold. <laughs> That's literally what I do. I told you I'm not a spec guy, but no, oh, DCA man, they make they make definitely the best wheels in business. Uh, I change them probably once a year, which is crazy. Like they last me a year those wheels, which is crazy because Flatland put so much effort into into those like wheels, you know, uh -huh. like because we always bent and uh, right. the free coaster never gave up on me. 
uh, and I think it's really important because I write a lot of contest uh -huh. and sometimes free coaster when you write contest and if you don't trust your free coaster it can be really a, a mind fucker this one. You've seen so many riders that are in the mm. contest run and they're free coaster engaged and you're like, ah, mm -hmm. you should have run the clutch. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you should have run the clutch. You should have run the clutch. <laughs> and uh, and no, I still ride um, um, what what is called in English this uh, hub guards hub guards yeah. because uh, sometimes I grind not as much as before but sometimes I do right. uh, I run them in the front though not because of the grind but because when I do tricks on the back wheel ah. it doesn't hurt my finger like so you that. don't get your fingers uh, in the spokes I don't get my fingers in the spokes see I don't think I've ever been worried about getting my fingers caught in the yeah, spokes I'm protected <laughs> it's like a wheel condom for my hands <laughs> a wheel condom for my hands. <laughs> Odyssey Hub Guards, a wheel <laughs> condom for your hands. <laughs> so what about the rims? As you mentioned, you put a lot of torque and a lot of pressure on your rims when riding Flatland. So why do you trust these rims? It looks like we have the Hazard Lights, which is a classic rim. It's been around forever. Again, I'm not a really great mechanic guy, so I don't really know how to do, do my spokes sometimes. Uh -huh. But I know like these wheels are stress-free for me. They uh, you know, they are just low maintenance. Yeah, like even straight out of the box, they come this way, yeah, straight out of the box, exactly. right? These aren't even custom. Yeah, no. And no, no. you don't even need to, like, even after riding them a bit, they're still, they still stay tight and yeah, stay true. Yeah, I put those on, uh, like, 10 days ago, and I haven't tied them back on, which uh -huh. is crazy, because usually when you put wheels out of the box, sometimes you need to tie them, right, right. them, like, two days later, on this one, no. Like, they still, they still run great, you know? Like, so... And I love new wheels when they are straight like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, now Matthias, this next product is something I don't know a whole lot about. I know a lot about pegs, but I don't know a lot about flatland pegs. Why don't you tell me what these are and what's special about these pegs? These pegs are the IGI Roughneck uh, pegs. The IGI is a company um, done by uh, Jean-William Prévost, okay. one of the yeah. greatest flatland riders ever. On the Canadian, Canadian right? Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> what you know about Canada? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I love them because they come with a with a, a screw at the end, uh -huh. and so like it's really good when you do when you do tricks pivoting on your because we always ah. do tricks pivoting, uh -huh. and if you don't have those caps, the sh the shoes like get destroyed. Okay. And also when you ride on the back wheel, you have pegs in your hand, and so like it can really like cut your hands okay again they are a protective yeah. uh, thing for the for the for the fingers they are like they have like are they metal or plas no, they plastic no plastic okay but very hard plastic and i think uh, aluminum inside okay and uh, they are like threaded here so like it doesn't really uh, it's not slippery for my feet but right. I can still grind on it as like that knurling yeah. yeah exactly and you can obviously change the I changed the caps, uh -huh. I changed them every like three months. Like a bar end. Yeah, like a, exactly, yeah. like a bar end. And uh, they are a great product, and I'm really happy to support a, a Flatland company. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very, very small niche company. industry. Very yeah. Niche industry, but yeah. you know, Jean William is killing it, so I'm really happy to run those pegs. Finally, let's talk about your tires the Odyssey Super Circuit tires. You're riding the 2.1 size. This is a great all around tire. Why do you choose this tire, this size, and what pressure do you prefer? You know, when uh, Odyssey came up with those tires, they actually sent me the samples like uh -huh. two years ago okay. to, um, to test them, and uh, they wanted the feedback on how they, they felt. Instantly felt in love with those tires because they are super grippy on, uh -huh. the, on slippery contest floors. And this, okay. is like, yeah, this is really amazing and I think they must be super grippy on like uh, slippery balls right well, you know okay and uh, they are very light because I think they are made of Kevlar okay um, if I'm uh, right and uh, they support high pressure because I run a lot of pressure okay. as a flat rider I run the 100 psi okay and uh, no problem at all with 100 psi and uh, they last very long even if you ride on the rough floor and uh, the design of the tire is really like great for flat because with flatland tires, if you have too much materials, it really slows down your riding. With this tire, it's the perfect like in between, uh, where you have enough material for the tire to last long, and uh, and uh, you know it's good enough for for the the speed of your trick. So mm -hmm. I really love those tires. Matthias, 
Thank you for sharing your Haro build with the people out there in Source BMX world today. Everybody, make sure to check out the Source Bike Builder. There you can see everything Matias is running. You can get pricing, specs, and availability. SourceBMX.com.